Good morning, Cascade Kids. I'm so glad that you joined us this morning. This is the space where we get to learn about God. I'm Pastor Angela, and I have another great lesson for you from the book of Acts, chapter six and seven. But before we get to that, I wanna know, do you know what our life app is? If you do, say it to somebody next to you. If you said determination, give yourself some points. And if the grown-ups in your house said determination, give them some points too. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you've started. And we've look, been looking at lessons all this month out of the book of Acts about the disciples who, um, who were given determination by God to keep going through some really tough stuff. Well, now we're going to switch and talk about Stephen, somebody named Stephen. He lived about the uh, time of the early church when the church was just getting started. And he was a believer who just really loved God. And he comes into the story because what was happening was there were so many people that were joining the church. Remember last week we said there were like 5,000 people that became believers? The church just kept growing really, really fast. And uh, the disciples and the apostles, they really cared about everybody in the church being cared for well. And this is what um, plan Peter and the apostles came up with. This comes to us from Acts 6, chapters 2 and 3. And it says, the apostles gathered all the believers together, and they said it wouldn't be right for us to give up teaching God's word, and we have to stop teaching to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven of your men. They must be known as men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit. We will turn this important work over to them. Well, Stephen was one of those seven. Now, there were so many people kind of um, spending a lot of time together and sharing space and doing life together. And you know how people do. People argue when arguments started um, happening. But the thing about Stephen is that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So when people tried arguing with him, his answers were so good that they just, they couldn't get anywhere with it. And it was kind of infuriating. And some people were so upset with him that they started telling lies. And some of the lies were really big, bad lies, the kind of lies that would get him in serious trouble. They said that Stephen was saying things against God and against Moses. So guess who walks in? The religious leaders. Remember them from last week? They were happy to arrest Stephen and... Um, and they got people together that were going to tell lies about him, were willing to tell lies about him in public. Let's just say Stephen did not get a fair trial. And the high priest comes before Stephen and or calls Stephen before him and says, you know, what do you have to say for yourself? How do you respond to these accusations? And you know what? Instead of defending himself, Stephen was more concerned about getting the religious leaders to see that Jesus really was the Son of God, the promised one, the one that was going to be their savior, that they'd been waiting for, that Israel had been waiting for for years. So he starts telling them about Abraham and Joseph and Moses and David. He basically gives them a history lesson about their own history, basically telling them that, you know, God has sent people before and um, we haven't always responded well or received them well. Yeah, the religious leaders didn't like that. But he kept going. Stephen kept going because it was more important to him to try and sway these people's mind because he wanted them to know who Jesus was. And so even though it made them mad, and even though the real reason they had him arrested was because of the Jesus talk, and he knew it, he kept talking about Jesus. Things did not go well for Stephen after that. But you know what? Scripture tells us that Stephen loved God right up till the very last breath. And he was able to keep going because God was with them and he knew that God was with them and he knew that God knew the end of the story. And he knew that Jesus was waiting for, them, for him at the end of his own story. And that's kind of like Abraham, Joseph, Moses, and David. And I think it's a really good time for us to review because we've talked about them in the past several months. So let's review it really quick, okay? Abraham, do you remember him? He's the one who God promised he would make um, his descendants as many as the stars, as numerous as the stars. But the thing was, Abraham and his wife Sarah were like your grandparents' age or older when they had their first child. I am sure when they spent all those years wondering 
what's going to happen. They trusted God, but I'm sure they didn't know how it was going to end. And then Joseph. I mean, yeah, it ended well for Joseph. He, he ended up at the end of his story. He's Pharaoh's right-hand guy in Egypt, and he had a position of power, and he could make a difference and help a lot of people. But uh, before that, do you remember what happened? It started with the fancy coat his dad gave him, and then his brothers um, threw him into a pit and sold him as a slave, told his dad that he was dead, and then as a slave, he was wrongfully accused and put in prison, and he spent many, many years there. I am sure all those years in prison, he had to be thinking, I have no idea how this is going to end, but I know God, and I know God is with me. And then Moses, do you remember Moses? He's the one whose mama put him in a basket and floated it down the Nile River because, um, well, she was trying to save his life. And then Moses ended up leading his people out of Egypt. Um, remember, God parted the, the Red Sea through Moses, and then... Well, he didn't part the Red Sea through Moses, but he, through Moses' staff, he parted the Red Sea. And then, um, and then Moses led them into the Promised Land. Except that was after all of that nasty plague business and let my people go. No, I won't. Let them go. No. And then wandering in the desert for 40 years. It was a long time. There was a lot of um, confusion, I'm sure, um, among that and wondering how could this end well? And then David, David was the one who killed Goliath with a rock that was in his slingshot. And, um, and then eventually he became king of Israel. But between Goliath and becoming king, he was on the run from King Saul who wanted to kill him. And he spent time in caves and hiding out. And that's where he wrote some of the Psalms. I'm sure he wondered how this was going to end well too. The point is, is that each of them, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, and David, David, they each had really tough seasons, but they kept going through them because they knew that God was with them, and they knew that God knows the end of the story. And we can keep going too. I want to read this verse to you from the, from the book of Isaiah. And it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's from Isaiah 41.10. Did you catch that? I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my hand. Do not be dismayed. That word means a lot of things, but like scared or confused. Um, and even though we're going through a hard season now, I mean, I know you're missing out on so much stuff, but just like Abraham, Joseph, Moses, and David knew, and Stephen too, that even though we can't see the way out of this, God does. God can see it. And God is so big. Boys and girls, he is bigger than you can even imagine. He created everything in the earth and heavens. And he, he makes the sun rise every day and the stars and the moon come out at night. God is bigger than this. And he knows the end of the story. So we can keep going. We're going to continue in worship now. And as we do... I just want you to know you can sing along with Pastor Tim, but you can also just come before God and thank Him. Thank Him for all the ways that He has brought you through some difficult seasons. And remember that God is there. Do not be dismayed because He will hold you up with His right hand and help you. <laughs> 